Good morning, Tracy Community Church. Thank you for joining us for another Sunday morning here in the sanctuary. We're so happy that you joined us this morning. We just have some announcements for you. Uh, If you have not yet, subscribe to our YouTube channel so you can stay connected and plugged into all of the video content that we are posting. Also, follow us on Facebook. We have groups to connect everyone to stay connected during this time where we have to be socially distant. Also, you can follow us on Instagram. We have a church Instagram account, a TCC Kids Instagram account, and TCC Youth. Also, uh, join us on Wednesday nights. We still have our Wednesday night gatherings happening on YouTube. We have our adult Bible study, our kids content, and then also our youth content on YouTube as well. We also ask that you would continue to support this ministry. You can text GIVE to 209-270-6543. Also, you can give online at our website or through our app. If you'd like to mail in a check to our church, you could also mail it into our church address. If you need anything or if you'd like to help anyone that is in need during this time with grocery pickups or any other household items, you can register on our website for a grocery pickup. Thank you for joining us this Sunday, and have a great day. Well, good morning, Trace Community Church. Thanks for tuning in. Um, We're so glad that you've decided to come worship with us this morning. Uh, I want to also say welcome to whoever else might be watching this around the world. It came to my attention that we're not all in Tracy. So I'm so glad that uh, uh, you uh, decided to join us. Um, uh, Let me pray for us. Let's pray. God, we do just thank you for this time that we can join together in our homes. And we can just worship you. We can lift you high. God, thank you that um, you can receive all our praises just the same, um, even when we're all spread out at different times, even. And God, we just, uh, we thank you that you are faithful. Thank you that you never change. Thank you that you stay the same. God, and that in a time of just uncertainty, Lord, we know that we can depend on you. God, and that you are faithful to the very end. And Lord, we just... uh, are in awe of you this morning, Lord. We just worship you. We pour our hearts out before you. God, and and whatever it is that you want to do in us this morning, we pray that that would happen, God, that you would touch our hearts, that you would remind us of your goodness, Lord. Remind us of your faithfulness. God, and we celebrate you. Even in a difficult time, God, we choose to offer up just a sacrifice of praise this morning because in the difficult times, there's Uh, something special when we choose to just worship you. So God, pray that you would move in us, send your Holy Spirit to touch us. And God, we just thank you and we worship you in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's sing. Here we go. Praise is the highway To the throne of God, praise is the highway. To the heart of God, praise is the highway. To the move of God. The rocks will cry oceans will roar, the mountains will bow to the name of the Lord. He is our God. He will be praised. The idols will fall. The strongholds will break. Every weapon that forms will shatter and fail. He is our God. He is our faith. Praise is the highway to the throne of God. Praise is the highway to the heart of God. Praise is the highway to the move of God. Revival the church will awake, these anthem will drink, all other refrain, 
reigns, he is our song, he forever reigns, praise is the highway to the throne of God, praise is the highway to the heart of God, praise is the highway to the move of God. Let's sing that again. Praise is the highway. Praise is the highway to the throne of God. Praise is the highway to the heart of God. Praise is the highway to the moon of God. Sing it out. Lift up your head. Oh, lift up your head, fling wide the gates, break down the walls with a shout of praise. Lift up your voice, oh heaven down, oh sing like the river, make his praises loud. Oh, lift up your head, fling wide the gates. Break down the walls with a shout of praise. Lift up your voice, pull heaven down. Sing like thunder, make its praises loud. Praise is the highway to the throne of God. Praise is the highway. To the heart of God, praise is the highway, to the move of God.
Lord, we just thank you that we serve a great God. We thank you, Lord, that when everything seems uncertain, you are the same yesterday, today, and forever. You never change. You are always great. You are always big. And so we look to you this morning. As we were singing, Good, Good Father, I really, um, there's that line in the third verse, you call me deeper still, and and we just repeat that a a few times. And I I just had this picture of like Jesus saying, come on, come on, come deeper, come with me. And it wasn't like, like, let's be serious so that I can, you know, expound greatly into your knowledge. It wasn't any of anything super holy. It was like, come hang out with me. Like, let's have fun together. Let's hang out together. I just believe that um, through this time, I've, I've heard so many people say, like, I don't have anything else to do, so I'm spending more time with Jesus. And, and I, I love that. I love that. And I think that's what he wants from us. Not just that we would give him our extra time, but that we would go deeper. That our heart cry would be, Lord, I, I want to be with you. I want to hang out with you. Take me deeper. So, Lord, this morning, we just say yes. Take us deeper. Take us deeper into you. Show us your goodness. Show us your greatness. Show us your mercy, God. You are so good. It's so worthy of our praise. We thank you that you never fail us. 
God, I just pray that you would continue to speak to our hearts and that you would draw us deeper still. We thank you. We praise you. We bless you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Have a wonderful week. We love you guys. Good morning, Tracy Community Church. It's Pastor Sam. I am so glad that you chose to hang out with us this morning. Man, I know that we can't all be together in the same building, but what I do know is this, is I know that God is with us no matter where we're at. I know that God is with me here this morning in this building, and I also know that God is with you wherever you're at, whether you're in your living room, whether you're in your bed, maybe you're sitting at the dining room table having some breakfast while you're watching this. I know that God is always present with us. And so this morning, we're going to jump right into it. We're going to be in the book of 2 Chronicles chapter 20. Let me kind of set this up. The, the, the main character in our story is a guy by the name of King Jehoshaphat. Now, Jehoshaphat was the king of the southern kingdom of Judah at this time, and he was actually a good king. He was a great king. Now, just because he was a great king doesn't mean that he always made the right choices. Doesn't mean he always made the right decisions. One instance we read about is actually found in chapter 18, a few, ver, a few chapters before 20. And what we see is that he actually allied himself or lined himself up with a guy by the name of King Ahab. Now, you'll remember Ahab, Ahab was the king who had the uh, confrontation with Elijah. Now, remember, Elijah went to the king and said, because of your wickedness, that it wasn't going to rain for a while, and it didn't. And then Elijah called the prophets of Baal and had the big um, um, encounter, big battle up on top of Mount Carmel. This is the same Ahab, the same king Ahab, now that Jehoshaphat has aligned himself with. And it tells us in chapter 18 that, that they actually went to battle together against another nation. And what the problem was is Jehoshaphat, instead of um, listening to the prophet from God, um, he chose to follow Ahab and his prophets. And so they go into battle together, and, and, and it wasn't a good decision for either one of them. Actually, in the battle, Ahab ended up losing his life. And in the middle of this battle, what we see is that, that Jehoshaphat actually found himself completely surrounded by the armies. And in that moment, they were about to kill him. And it says in chapter 18 that, that in that moment that, that uh, Jehoshaphat cried out to God, and in that moment, God heard his cry and delivered him from that moment. And man, I think about that, and, and, and I'm so thankful that, you know, sometimes we make some really poor choices and really bad decisions, and we find ourselves in situations, we find ourselves in different battles because of the choices and decisions that we make. But I'm thankful that we serve a God who, who even when it's my fault, when I make poor choices, that when I cry out to God, God still hears me and God can still save us. And, you know, sometimes we do find ourselves in those moments because of things that we do, because of choices that we make. But, you know, sometimes we, we end up finding ourselves in these battles or these struggles, and, man, we didn't do anything wrong. It wasn't a choice that we made. It, it wasn't a decision that we made that caused it. It wasn't even something that maybe we even anticipated. But what I do know is this, and here's, before we jump in the story, here's what I want you to hear is that no matter where you find yourself, whether it's a choice that you made that caused this or, or you just found yourself in the middle of this battle, what I want you to hear today is this, is that God is never caught off guard. No matter what battle you go through, whether you caused it or it just showed up on your doorstep, God is gonna use that thing and he will use it to develop and he will use it to grow you into who he has called you to be. God always has a plan through everything. God is always setting you up for something greater. Romans 8.28 reminds us that, that God uses all things to work together for the good of those who love him and those who are called according to his purposes. And so this morning, we're gonna jump right into it, but the question would be this, what do you do in the middle of a battle that you didn't choose, but it chooses you? Let me read the first two verses in 2 Chronicles chapter 20 this morning. It says this, after this, the Moabites and Ammonites with some of the Meunites came to wage war against Jehoshaphat. Some people came and told Jehoshaphat, a vast army is coming against you from Edom, from the other side of the Dead Sea. It is already in Hazan, Tamar, that is in Gedi. So just when things are going well, now at this time, everything was going just fine for Jehoshaphat and the, and the kingdom of Judah. It was going well, but in that moment, suddenly these armies show up, three different armies show up and, and word gets to Jehoshaphat that they're about 25 miles away and they're preparing to attack him. Now, because they're so close, Jehoshaphat doesn't have time to prepare. He doesn't have time to get his armies ready and, and get them in position to attack them. The enemy has launched this surprise attack, and now they're on his doorstep. 
In verse 3, it says this, Alarmed, Jehoshaphat resolved to inquire of the Lord, and he proclaimed a fast for all of Judah. So what does Jehoshaphat do in the middle of this when, when he's faced with this sudden surprise attack? What does Jehoshaphat do? It says that he goes straight to God. You know, there's something about a surprise attack that, that will drive you into the presence of God. There is something about that thing that you didn't see coming that should drive you to the place that you should always go and you should always run. But I love the scripture. I love this part where it says that, that Joseph, it says that he was alarmed. But I love these next words. It says, he was alarmed, but resolved. He was, he was alarmed, but resolved. Alarm simply means that he was taken back. He was, he was shook. Have you ever been in that moment where you hear something is coming against you and you don't understand why or you don't understand where it's coming from? And you're in that moment, and you're like, man, God, I feel like I've been doing everything right. I've been serving you. I, I've been faithful. I, I've been reading. I've been praying. I, I felt like I was, I, was, I was raising my kids the right way. I was, I was doing everything I thought was right, God. And now this shows up. Now, now here I am, God, and, and this shows up on my doorstep. But again, it says that, that Jehoshaphat, he was alarmed but resolved. It means that this, it means he was determined to seek the Lord. In the face of, a, of an unexpected attack, his mindset was just this, I have to get to God. I have to get to the Lord. And the thing about it in this moment is this, is that he had already made up his mind well in advance of what he would do before the attack ever came. Before he ever heard that somebody was coming against him, he had already made up in his mind exactly where he would run to, exactly who he would go to. And remember, he had, he had learned this from his previous failures. Remember, he didn't always respond this way. This wasn't always his first reaction. The last battle we saw him in, he almost lost his life because he didn't choose to run to God. He didn't inquire of God. And so this time, Jehoshaphat isn't, isn't running around looking at what other people are doing. He went to seek the Lord. He, he went to inquire of God. He went to prayer. Now, as we read this prayer in just a minute here, we see that it wasn't just some cheap little prayer either, right? It wasn't a prayer where you're just looking for some scripture that you can slap on a battle so that if things don't go the way that you think they should go, that we can blame God. That's not what he did. This time, he is seeking after God with everything that he has. This time he calls all of Judah into an entire fast until they hear from God. This time Jehoshaphat is, come, is not surrounding himself with, with, with people who don't fear God. This time he's surrounding himself with the right group of people. He isn't looking to culture or what is popular to do in this situation. This time he's going to the right place. And so he prays. Verse six says this, this is his prayer. He says, Lord, the God of our ancestors. Are you not the God who is in heaven? You rule over all the kingdoms of the nations. Power and might are in your hand and no one can withstand you. Verse seven, our God, did you not drive out the inhabitants of this land before your people Israel and give it forever to the descendants of Abraham, your friend? They have lived in it and have built in it a sanctuary for your name saying, if calamity comes upon us, whether the sword of judgment or plague or famine, we will stand in your presence before this temple that bears your name and we will cry out to you in our distress and you will hear us and save us. So what's Jehoshaphat doing here? He goes into prayer, but, but notice what he does here. He is shifting his focus from that which is coming against him to the one who is above him. And so if I'd give you a, a, a takeaway this morning from this part, I would say this that we need to learn how to shift our focus. When a battle comes at us, shift your focus from the battle to the one who is above you. Shift your focus from what is in front of you to that which is above you. Jehoshaphat is now taking his eyes off the army that is coming against him. The battle that is before him, that is bigger than him, that is stronger than him, that is more mighty than him. And now he's got his eyes focused on the one who is greater and bigger and more powerful than anything that would ever come against him. So I would ask you today is this, where is your focus? Where are your eyes? What is it that you're looking at today? And maybe we just need to, to get our eyes off of the problem and get our eyes to God who is above all things. So Jehoshaphat, he is, he is reminding God in his prayer of what God has already done. 
he begins to praise him and, and he begins to, 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 to just tell him how awesome and how amazing he is. And we need to remind God of what he has already done when we're unsure of what he's doing right now for us. And it's not so that we can remind God because God doesn't remember. We need to remind God so that we can remember, so that we can remind ourselves, listen, this isn't my first rodeo. This isn't my first struggle. This isn't foreign to God. God knows exactly what he is doing. He knows exactly what the next step is. God's got this. Let's keep reading verse 10. It says, but now here are men from Ammon, Moab and Mount Seir, whose territory you would not allow Israel to invade when they came from Egypt. So they turned away from them and did not destroy them. Verse 11, Joseph continues, see how they are repaying us by coming to drive us out of the possession you gave us as an inheritance. So here's Jehoshaphat in his prayer. He is praising God. He's saying, thank you, God, because you are awesome. You're amazing. You are the great God. But notice a little shift in his prayer right here. He goes from praising God to now he is blaming God. Notice the shift. He tells God, listen, this battle, this one's not our fault, God. We were doing what we were supposed to be doing. We were serving you, God. This battle is different. We didn't cause this one. Now listen, there's been lots of battles where we did cause it, but this one, Lord, this, this is different. These three armies that are coming against us, these are the same three armies that when Moses was coming into the land, you wouldn't let Moses destroy them. And now, God, because you wouldn't let them destroy them at that time, now these armies are coming against us to drive us out of the possession that you gave us as an inheritance. Now catch that last statement with me. He says this, he says, it's the possession that you gave us as an inheritance. You gave us this land. You gave us as a possession, God. Here's the second takeaway that I would give to you. If it was God's who gave it, then it's God's to protect. If it was God who gave it, then it is God's to protect. Let me take that a step farther. You are God's possession. You are God's treasure. And when you realize today that you are his son, when you realize that, that you are his daughter, that you are his friend, it will give you the confidence to know that it is not a matter of how much power that you have that will determine the next battle because when it's God's possession, it's God's problem. When it's God's possession, it is his job to protect. And today, if you are stewarding something that, that he gave you to possess, remember it's God's job to protect. Your family, your children, they are all God's possession. They are all his. You know, my wife and I, we have, we have four boys. And every single one of them, when they were born, just after that, we, we took them back to church. And, and, and when we were first back, we took all four of them, one by one, and we, and we dedicated them to the Lord. Now, what were we doing in that moment? In that moment, what we were saying is this, God, we know that you gave them to us to steward but Lord, we know that they belong to you, that they are your possession, that they are your children, God. And we just wanna do our best to steward them and guide them in that direction, Lord. And so I have to be honest with you, there's been lots of times as, we begin to ra as we're raising our, our children that, man, I forget this. I forget this. And, and as they, 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 they go places and do things, I begin to freak out. Man, I get scared, I get nervous, and, and, I, and I panic sometimes. And and lately, God has just been reminding me, listen, you gave them to me. They are my possession. And sometimes when I'm not with them, I, you know, as a parent, you start freaking out and you start thinking of all the worst case scenarios and you, because you can't always be there with them. But the thing with God and the thing that he constantly is reminding me is this, that he can always be with them. That no matter where they go, that he can always be with them. Why? Why would he do this? Because they're his possession. They're his. Let's keep going. Verse 12. Jehoshaphat continues in his prayer. He says this. He says, our God, will you not judge them? For we have no power to face this vast army that is attacking us. We do not know what to do, but our eyes are on you. Man, what an absolute powerful statement this is. Man, sometimes we don't like to admit it, but, but sometimes the best place in any battle that you go through, sometimes the best place in the middle of a battle is when you get to that place where you can honestly say, you know what? 
I have no idea what to do. I am at a complete loss in this moment. I have no idea what to do. It is in that moment when you take your hands off the battle and when you go to God and you allow God to do what only God can do. And God says, listen, if you will just change your focus, I will show you how to fight this battle. Stop looking at how big the army is. Stop looking at how how bleak the situation looks. Stop looking at how impossible everybody says it is. Stop looking at that and begin to remind yourself how big, how great God is. And the thing with God is this, God always wins. God always wins. Verse 13, it says this, all the men of Judah with their wives and children and little ones, stood before the Lord. Verse 14, then the spirit of the Lord came on Jehaziel, son of Zechariah, son of Benani, the son of Jael, the son of Madaniah, a Levite and descendant of Asaph, as he stood in the assembly. Now let me stop right there for a minute because why mention all of these names here? Why go through all of these different generations? It's important because every Um, every name that is mentioned represents a certain generation where God was faithful. It means that every single time that God got ready to pass on his purpose to the next generation, that God never dropped it, that God never forgot about his promises. And here's the thing, God won't drop it now. God won't forget about the things that he spoke to you. It won't stop with you and you will not lose this battle if your focus is right. If you don't lose your focus, you won't lose this battle. And some of you are listening right now. And this morning, you're already at that point, man, where you have hit the panic button. You begin to freak out. And you're in that place where you feel like you have tried absolutely everything. And you're in that moment where you feel like, maybe you feel like just a complete failure because you think that you did something wrong. And you're trying to, you're pounding your brain and you're thinking, God, what did I do? I know I had to do something because there's there's no way this happened. I I don't understand what's going on. I don't get it, Lord. And you're doing everything you can to try to fix it. You're trying to figure it out and nothing is working. And you're panicking. And you need to hear this right now. God is not freaking out. God knows exactly what the next move is. You know, we just celebrated Easter last week. We know how the story ends. We, we know what Sunday looks like. And here's the thing, if, if we can begin to learn to live our life from the perspective of Sunday, that when we, so that when we go through Friday, listen, Friday always comes before Sunday. Friday always comes before Sunday, but if we can learn to live our life from a perspective of what Sunday looks like, knowing that Jesus defeated death, hell, and the grave, and we live our lives from, from that perspective, it'll give you the faith and it'll give you the confidence to know that you can live through anything that Friday comes knowing because of what's happening on Sunday. God doesn't know how to fail and God can't lose. Let's keep going, verse 15. He said, listen, King Jehoshaphat, this is Jehaziel uh, uh, speaking now. He says, listen, Jehoshaphat, and all who live in Judah and Jerusalem, now someone needs to hear this today, this is what the Lord says to you. Do not be afraid or discouraged because of this vast army, for the battle is not yours, but God's. For the battle is not yours, but God's. Can we just make that our reminder this week? Can we just put that in every single room of our house so that every time we turn the corner, we see this? Can you remind ourselves that the battle is not yours, but God's? The prophet prophet is telling Jehoshaphat, listen, this thing isn't even about you. It is so much bigger than you. This battle is God's battle to fight. God has a bigger plan, but you just can't see it right now. But God knows what he's doing. Here's a third thing that I would give to you. I would say this. If the battle is too big, then it doesn't belong to you. If it's too big, then the battle doesn't belong to you. And if if you know that it's God's, then stop stressing like it's yours. Stop, Stop worrying like it's yours. Can we stop wasting all of our energy stressing about the battle and worrying about the battle? And can we just give it back to God and just remind God, listen, God, you are amazing and I don't know what I'm doing here. And so I'm giving it back to you, Lord. Verse 16 says, tomorrow march down against them. 
They will be climbing up by the pass of Ziz, and you will find them at the end of the gorge in the desert of Jeruel. Verse 17 says, you will not have to fight this battle. Take up your positions, stand firm, and see the deliverance of the Lord will give you. Judah and Jerusalem, don't be afraid. Do not be discouraged. Go out and face them tomorrow, and the Lord will be with you. And as I read these two verses right here, as I was studying this, these, three, these two verses kind of caught me off guard. I was thinking, wait a second, Lord, you just said that this isn't their battle, that, that they don't have to fight. And the question that I would ask is, if I don't have to fight it, then, then why do I have to get in position to fight? Why do I need to get into that position? And see, here's what, here's what the kingdom of Judah is about to learn. They're about to learn that this battle is not theirs, but God's. But you still have to go down to them. You still have to go down to where the battle is and confront it. So God tells them, listen, I need you to get into position, not so that you can fight, not so that you can struggle, but so that you can see the deliverance of the Lord, so that you can be a witness to watch what God is about to do in your life. Verse 21, he says, after consulting the people, Jehoshaphat appointed men to sing to the Lord and to praise him for the splendor of his holiness. As they went out, the head of the army saying, give thanks to the Lord for his love endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord for his love endures forever. Verse 22, it says, as they begin to sing and praise, the Lord set ambushes against the men of Ammon and Moab and Mount Seir who were invading Judah and they were defeated. The Ammonites and the Moabites rose up against the men from Mount Seir to destroy and annihilate them. And after they finished slaughtering the men from Seir, they went and they, they helped to destroy one another. Now, what an absolutely amazing story. This only happens with God, right? Jehoshaphat got his people into position not to fight, but to begin to worship. And as they begin to worship, God began to move. As they worshiped, God began to move. As Jehoshaphat and his, and his nation, as they begin to worship God, God began to send these ambushes against the armies that were attacking them. There were three different nations coming at Jehoshaphat and Judah and the Bible says that they began to eliminate each other. It says that the first two turned and went against the one and completely destroyed them. And then after they destroyed that one army, the two looked at each other and began to fight and annihilated each other. What an absolutely crazy story, right? Here's the fourth thing I would give to you is this, is today, as you begin to worship God, through your battles, through your struggles, as you begin to worship God, God is gonna begin to fight what you can see by sending what you can't see. As you worship God, God is gonna, gonna fight what you can see by sending something that you cannot see. Today, as you begin to worship, God begins to move. As you worship, God moves. God is fighting for you. When you begin to understand who you are in Christ, when you begin to worship God and you put your faith in God, understand this, you get God's help. You get his strength, you get his mercy, you get his miracles, you get his provision, you get his healing. When you begin to worship, you begin to wage this war of worship. And if I'm being honest with you, it sounds great, but sometimes it can feel stupid. Some, sometimes it can feel really awkward, right? Here comes the enemy. They're, 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 they're 25 miles away. They're coming at you. And Joseph, what are you gonna do? They're standing at your doorstep. They're, they're knocking on the door. They're attacking your family. They're, they're coming after your kids. Jehoshaphat, what are you gonna do about it? And see, Jehoshaphat didn't have to fight it, but he did have to face it. And today, God wants to give you the faith to face it. He wants to give you the faith to trust him. Do you have the faith not to fight with your flesh? but rather to fight in your spirit? Do you have the faith to worship God in the middle of a battle? Do you have the faith to give thanks to God when the enemy is attacking? Sometimes it takes more faith not to fight. Sometimes it, makes, it takes more faith to go to the cross and get over your pride and get over yourself and let God fight your battles for you. Today, can you look past your enemy and can you simply just praise God for the splendor of his holiness? 
Can you focus on, 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 on what, what is right about God and what, how awesome he is instead of focusing so much on what is wrong with your life and what's wrong with your situation? Can we shift our focus this morning? Can you look past what is standing right in front of you and can you focus on what is, what is that God is bigger and look to God who is, who is so much bigger and praise him? Are you willing to use gratitude as a strategy to fight the battles this morning? Are you willing to, to magnify God through it all? And here's the last thing that I would give you, the last kind of takeaway that I would want to show you in this story. It's this, that every battle that you face, there's a treasure attached to it. Every battle that you face, there's a treasure that's attached to it. See, when the sweat is done being poured out, when your jeans are completely worn out from, from kneeling and bowing before a mighty God, when, when, when your voice is almost gone from, from singing and crying out to God, what will be there in the end is the treasure that God had for you all along. Look at verse 24. It says, so when Judah came to a place overlooking the wilderness, they looked towards the multitude and there were dead bodies fallen on the earth. No one had escaped. Verse 25 says, when Jehoshaphat and his people came to take away their spoil, I love this, they found among them an abundance of valuables on the dead bodies and precious jewelry, which they had stripped off for themselves, more than they could carry away. And they were there three days gathering the spoil because there was so much. Man, again, when all the smoke clears, it's the treasure that will remain if you fight the right way. In just a moment, Josh and Karina and the band are going to come back up and, and we're going to close this thing out by spending just a, a few more moments in, in worship. But before we do, I just want to pray for you. And I, I want to spend these, these final few moments as we begin to worship, but I just want to declare this morning God, God's greatness in our situations, God's, God's amazing power that's available to us. But I just want to begin to, to declare some that God would begin to send the ambushes against, against the enemies that are coming against us. And here's the thing, as you begin to sing, as, as you begin to, to praise and you begin to declare God's goodness, I believe that God begins to move on our behalf. I believe that God begins to set up these ambushes against all the things that we, we face, that whether it's oppression or, 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 or depression or, or any type of darkness in your life. Those things that are coming against our families, trying to break them up, those, those things that are attacking our children that, that we can't do anything about. That, that, that we have no answers for, where we find ourselves in those moments where it's like, God, I, I have no idea what to do anymore. I believe that God begins to do things, things that we can't see to, to destroy the things that we can't see that are coming against us. And so I wanna pray for you this morning. And, and I believe that God is gonna use everything that comes against us, everything that was meant for evil, God is gonna use to create a cross, to, to, to create a space for, the resurre for a resurrection for the glory of the Lord. Let me pray for you. Dear Father, we just, we just stop in this moment, Lord, and, and God, I just wanna say thank you. Uh, thank you so much for everything that you're doing in our lives right now, God. You are so great and you are, you are so mighty and you are so powerful, God, and, and I'm so thankful, Lord, that you know exactly what you're doing. God, when, when we don't know, when we, can't, when we can't see everything that you're doing, Lord, we're thankful, God, that you have everything under control. And Lord, the, this morning, God, I pray that you would forgive us for, for not looking to you first, God, not, not going to you first above everything else, Lord. And, and Father, I pray that this morning that you would teach us, God, how, how to become prayer warriors. Lord, teach us how to, how to become those worshipers, God, that you desire, uh, people who would seek after you with everything that we have, Father. And Lord, I, I, I just declare this morning that, that you would begin to send ambushes against the enemies that are attacking us, God. And, and Lord, you know all of the different situations that are going on. Lord, you know that what's happening in every single home, Lord. God, you know what's going on in the world. And so, Father, we just, we just release all of those things to you, God. We release our families and our, and our jobs and our finances and our children. We release all of those things to you, Father. Lord, again, teach us how just to begin to worship you through all of those things. God, you are bigger and you are greater than all of those. And Father, I, I pray, God, that our, that our eyes and our hearts and our minds would be focused on you, Lord. Like Jehoshaphat prayed, God, I don't know what to do, but my eyes are on you, God. Lord, I, I don't know what to do anymore. 
I've tried everything, but God, my eyes are on you. Lord, your word says that you are the author and the finisher of our faith, God. And so, Lord, today, we will look to you in all things. We thank you for what you're doing. We thank you in advance for the great things that you are going to do. And, Lord, we bless you and we thank you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.
promise still stands. Great is your faithfulness. 